We're live, Tim. Tim Super. Flagler. That was a close Tim one, Flag huh? Yeah, Tim Flagler, my nemesis. I'm going to turn my volume up a little bit. So, you know, for for those of you who are who are listening um, today, and and follow these things, um, fly tying is not a competitive sport. And uh, can you hear me? Because my screen just froze. I can hear you, Tom, but yeah, your screen is frozen. Your screen is frozen. Yeah. Okay. There it goes. Um, but you know, and 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 Tim and I, Tim and I compete in this um, for fun and to entertain you guys. We're, we're not really, we're not really very competitive about things, but um, we like to have fun and. You know, it's it's definitely not a competition. Not to say that I don't try to win. And so far, Flagler has beaten me four times in a row. I do try to win, but um, you know, it's all in fun, and um, and we're and I think it's really valuable for um, for people to see how how two different tires approach the same pattern. You know, even even a you know a classic standard pattern like this. So. Um, Tim and I don't discuss these things before we start tying. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, the differences uh, that we do, even with a fairly straightforward fly like this. Tim, I got to ask you, why, why did you pick The Undertaker? Um, I, I like The Undertaker as far as like, like, like a functional, you know, hair wing Atlantic salmon fly. It, it's... Um, uh, and and one, one of the main one, reasons is, the main reason to me, it's one of the few Atlantic the salmon flies that, salmon that really looks good without a jungle cock eye on um, it. Mm -hmm. I'd, I'd rather it without the eye. Um, I think yeah. they called it a blind yeah. undertaker back in the day without the jungle cock. So A blind um, undertaker, yeah. yeah. And it, it is. And it's also, I, it's also a great steelhead fly. Oh, yeah. Pardon? I haven't had much luck Atlantic salmon fishing. And so... Uh, the the only grab I've ever gotten was on an Undertaker, so I'm pretty much a fan. Pretty much a fan. <laughs> well, I, I've never I haven't caught Atlantic on Undertakers. I've caught them on Green Butts, and I've caught them on I think General Practitioners and some some kind of um, basic Nova Scotia patterns. But I have caught Steelhead on the Undertaker. I think it's a really good Steelhead fly for for if you're going to fish a traditional uh, Steelhead wet fly. It's a really good Steelhead fly. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, one of those flies. Proven, yep. Proven itself over a long time, too, as far as, I understand, yeah. as far as I understand. Well, it's not. I think it was developed in like maybe the 80s by a guy named Warren Duncan. I don't think it's that terribly old. Oh, really? Um, oh, really? Yeah. I, I, I don't think it's I don't think it's super, super old. Um, I looked I looked it up and um, I think it was maybe the 70s or the 80s. So it's not that. Not that old of a pattern. All right. As Atlantic Joe, can, salmon flies go. Can you hold on for one second? I'm going to see if I can get Joan to do something for me. Yeah. Can, can you just make okay. sure that your that microphone is turned off? Um, the audio input on your machine. So let's see. What do we have here? We got Sweden. Too much return sound, says Claudio. Central PA is in the house. Larry from Grapevine, Texas. Not much Atlantic salmon fishing, but Larry, you know this. This is a wet. This is a herring wet fly, and it'll catch. I mean, you catch bass on this, probably. You know, if you if you just wanna, if, or or you could uh, you could catch white bass swinging this in the current in Texas. Um, yeah, so you know, it, it is an Atlantic salmon fly that works really well for steelhead, but. Um, you know, it's a hair ring wet fly, so it, it could be it could be used for many many things. But I think that I think that um, tying Atlantic salmon flies is is a very good exercise for your thread management and fly tying skills. I know um, back in the it was a 1980s, I went to a a full dress salmon fly school taught by Bill Hunter, who was a, a very, very famous uh, uh, full dress salmon fly tire. And he had a fly shop in New Hampshire. And I spent a weekend taking a course on um, 
on full draft salmon flies. And I really learned from that to make every turn of thread count, every single turn of thread. Before that, I would just kind of, you know, wrap and wrap and wrap and not really pay attention to it. And I still do it that way a lot of times. But I have learned that, um, I have learned a little bit more about precisely placing my thread, particularly in a more complicated fly. So I think that um, you can learn a lot by tying this fly, even if you never plan on going Atlantic salmon fishing. I'm doing Great. all the talking because I know, because I know you got, you got uh, issues in the background there, Tim. Yeah, we're going to, we're just going to try to write the audio here a little bit. I hear, hear myself when I'm talking. So, um, and then we have to turn it back up when you're talking, but I think we have it under control. So I think we have it under control. So be good. I, you know, I think you probably, you're screen freezing a little. I think, I think probably, um, we should take a couple points off from your score just for that poor audio today. All right. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> well, should, should, should we get tying? I mean, with power failures and audio problems, should we get tying now before uh, disaster? Yeah. Yeah. We should. I, I should tell people it's been very windy today here. And uh, I just got my power back 15 minutes ago. So <laughs> I'm a little flustered. As you can tell, you know, I'm so, I'm so nervous tying against Flagler. <laughs> I'm going to do a little video check here, guys. That should be a hook from me. I'm going to have to zoom out a little bit, I guess, on that I'm one. I'm going to check, too. There's materials, and there's an undertaker. Okay. I'm good. And there's materials, yep. and back to me. Oh, um, two different colors of thread. I know what you're going to do. <laughs> I know what you're going to do. And I almost did that and I didn't. Yeah. It, it's what I always do. It's the, I mean, I, I, I don't think I can tie an Atlantic salmon fly any other way. Yeah. Maybe I'll go get my white thread. <laughs> no, you're, you're locked in right now. Uh, oh no, no. I, I got a, I got a spool of white thread. I got a spool of white thread. I was tying down on the kitchen table because the only place there was light in the house. <laughs> All right, okay. shall we start? Yeah, shall let's. We? Uh, why don't you? Why don't you put your hook in your vise and get it started while I go get my white thread? I I can do that. <laughs> I think. <laughs> um, all right, guys. So, one of the first things with tying Atlantic salmon flies is the hook itself, and there are uh, a ton of a ton of uh, different variations. Uh, this is kind of a classic-looking Atlantic salmon fly hook. It's a Daiichi. It's a, an Alec Jackson model, kind of real sexy-looking. Uh, Tom and I had agreed on tying a size six, but I'm going to kind of just a little bit with the size seven. Um, so just a little smaller, and again, an Alec Jackson hook. And w what I found is that this hook in particular is just a little bit longer than some other hook models. And so that little extra length um, allows me to have a slightly longer peacock curl body in the front, which I, I really like. It, it looks a little short otherwise. So for, for me, the other thing that I do is... Um, Sorry, we're going to go over to here. Is I, I do, I use two kinds of thread. These are, it's Vivas 10 aught. It's a nice, thin, but very strong thread. Uh, as Tom was saying, you, you kind of want to keep track of almost every single thread wrap. And, and this fine diameter thread helps to keep the bulk to a minimum. And um, so, but I start with white, and I'm going to start it right at the back of that return. And just take a few wraps rearward. I'm going to go down onto the shank, just two or three wraps, and then snip off that excess tag. And again, just keeping the thread wraps to a minimum, that closes down that return for now and positions my thread where I want it for the next step, um, which is tying in a tinsel rib. And uh, I guess Tom isn't back just yet. So I'm back. I'm back. I just put up the line. Oh, okay. I'm here. Um, so I'm going to keep on going, Tom, if that's okay, and, and put yeah, in my yeah. tinsel. Yeah, go ahead and, and uh, break your thread. 
Okay. <laughs> Joan, you're going to have to write it a little better. Okay. Um, anyway, this is um, uh, for tinsel. Not all tinsels are created equal. Um, I found that out the hard way. Some kind of separate and you see the core when you wrap, but this, uh, the uni French stuff in oval, uh, small size gold works really, really well for this pattern. And you don't want to you don't want to short yourself on this. I, I know I'm going to end up wasting some, but you know, uh, uh, I guess this is almost a ten inch length um, is what I'm going to start with, and go back to the fly. And so, kind of the idea here is is when you're tying Atlantic salmon flies, you have that space behind the return. And over time, you want to wrap things in to fill in that space, if you will. So there isn't like a, a, a jump down there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie in this tinsel. I'm going to tie it in on the side, but pull it down and just take thread wraps rearward to secure it. Not really touching. I mean, that we're just going to keep an even coat. Uh, I, I want this to start on the underside of the hook shank so people can't see it. And where I wrap back to with the white thread is I want the white thread to hang right at the hook point. And I'm kind of kind of a little kooky about that. That's, that's gonna be my measurement uh, for where I want the, the tag to start at the rear of the fly. And why don't we go back to you, Tom? Okay. Good, because I'm gonna I'm gonna do it a little differently. Okay. Uh, and I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna use a uh, oh, use a standard salmon hook, salmon wet fly. I think it's probably the same hook Tim is using. Um, actually, it's not Tom. I I, I was talking about that uh, while you were away. I'm using a. And Alec Jackson, and it's actually a size seven, not a size six. So, make oh, Alec, you know I like the Alec Jackson, but I didn't know we were allowed to. <laughs> I didn't know we were allowed allowed to use the Alec Jackson. Yeah, it's oh, a sexy boy. looking hook. I know it is. I would have used it, but it's not a standard length hook. I'm going to get a little closer here to show this part. Okay, then, so uh, go ahead. I I do start I do start the same place as Tim up on the eye to close that close that eye up. I start my thread here, wind back. And I usually cut it off here, and then my my hook is not as long. The shank isn't as long as the Alec Jackson that Tim has. Um, so I'm going to use I'm going to use slightly different proportions, and I'm going to go I'm going to go back almost to the barb, right about there, and then I use. Tim, it doesn't look like you're going to use two uh, two tinsels. I'm going to use a really fine oval tinsel for the tip, and then I'm going to use a uh, heavier heavier uh, oval tinsel for the rib. So two different kinds. Tim, how old do you think that French tinsel is? Yikes! It's, I think it's probably about fifty years old. Wow. Anyway, I got I got a little bit of tinsel to go through. <laughs> Wooden spool too. So it's uh, it's old stuff. I'll never I'll never run out. And I'm gonna cut I'm gonna cut a uh, you know about I don't know. Hey, yeah. Could you probably move your camera back just a little bit so people can see the whole the whole hook? Well. Oh, well, I want to show this part right now a little tighter. Okay, cool. And then I'll back and then I'll back up, okay? 
So what I'm going to do is I am going to place this tinsel so that the end of the tinsel is even with that, that return spot on the top. And then I'm going to wind back enough thread so that it's about five turns, of, three to five turns of tinsel. And then I'm going to, I'm going to spin my bobbin a little bit. This thread's pretty fine, just so it's nice and smooth. And then I am going to take, I'm going to start my first turn of tinsel on the bare shank and then carefully come up with touching turns. And then I am going to tie that off on the bottom. And the reason I'm going to do this is that when I end up with tying all my stuff in here, I, I, want, that, I want that stuff to be evenly distributed around the hook. Do you want to... Uh, do you want to take over, Tim, now? Yeah, why don't I, I tie in my tag? I, I do it a little differently than Tom does. Um, as you can see, I have my tag. Uh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> I have my tag on the underside uh, just to kind of hide where it comes in. And so you're seeing kind of pure wraps as, as, as I start. I also leave my bobbin right there. And you guys have seen me do this before. Just by having to push up on the bobbin ends up keeping those wraps together. So I think that's three, four, five. And I'm actually, I know this is, this is heresy. I'm going to take a sixth wrap and go under and start going up. Six wraps? And this on the near side of the hook as I go. Now, on the side? On the side? Are you kidding me? Well... What I'm going to do is I'm going to take it up and I want to keep it on the side so it's filling in that space up to the return. And I do oh. like to go all the way up. I'm going to snip this off kind of even with the butt of the return. And I like to, to really get have that, that tinsel locked down. I had it locked down going back and going back this way because what you don't want to have happen is for those wraps to pull back down on the on the hook shank, which can happen with a lot of casting um, if it's not really locked down. How can you how can you possibly expect to catch an Atlantic salmon when you've taken six wraps of tinsel on your tag? Well, it, in the end, it's going to end up being five. Okay. okay. Oh. We'll see that later. All right. Okay. okay. All right. So um, I am going to now take my uh, first bit of floss, which is fluorescent uh, green, and I'm going to take um, I'm going to take one strand of this floss because this floss is for some reason thicker, about twice as thick as my red floss. So when I use my red floss, I'm gonna double it over, but I'm just gonna take one strand of this, uh, of this green floss, probably about, you know, about that much, whatever that is. You're still on camera. I know. <laughs> should I, I do that. both, should I do both of my, uh, Butts here, yeah. Why, why don't you do one? that? What and, do you think? And I'll do the same. What's that? Uh, why don't you do that and then I'll do the same? Okay, all right. So I'm starting here, and what I'm going to do first is I'm going to wind forward to 
to the point where I want my green tag to start, which is right about there. And then I am going to take this green tag and I'm going to lay it again the same place so that it's going to lay alongside those other things. And I'm going to take about four turns and I'm going to work forward, or three turns, and I'm going to work forward a bit with the bobbin. And then I am going to carefully wind this floss. Now, be careful that you don't let the floss slip through your fingers too much because you can fray it and get it dirty. So you have to kind of handle it gently. Then you're going to go right up against that tag and smoothly wind forward. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to back off those three turns of thread because I don't need them anymore. Um, and it's and it less likely to give me a bump there. So I'm going to tie that off on the bottom. And then I'm going to trim that even with that return. And it helps to wet everything here sometimes, keep it in place. And then I'm going to come forward a, a little bit more for my second butt which should be about the same as the first. And then I'm gonna take two pieces of this stuff because it's thinner, different brand or different lot, who knows what. So I'm gonna take a extra long piece of this. I'm gonna cut it. I'm gonna fold it over. Yeah, Tom, um, I was asking if you can use the word if you don't have broad. Sure. You use thread, you use dubbing. You can use, you know, any for its color. It's just a color. So you can, uh, you can use anything you want that gives you the same color. So now I'm going to tie this floss in the same way. And I'm going to come back. against right against that green and i'm going to do the same thing i'm going to back off i really don't need to here this is more if you were tying something like a jock scott and and Every turn of thread needed to count. You know, you might do that wind forward and then back off on it. And that's so that I just I just tie it because it's just kind of the way you tie Atlantic salmon flies. All right, should I leave it there? Yeah, that sounds sounds good. My, I I do these. I mean, really very very differently than you do, Tom. Um, yeah. Like uh -huh. you said at the beginning, everybody kind of has their own different way of doing things with these. But um, my mine starts with rather somebody commented that 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 uh, floss is my true nemesis, not you. And um, it, it's true. My fingers just tear regular floss apart. Um, but a friend of mine turned me on to this stuff, uh, Glowbrite, and it it. It's very, very bright to begin to begin with, which is good. But it's also it's a thin floss. You kind of have to do two layers of it, but it, it doesn't seem to fray as badly as, as a normal floss would, uh, for me anyway. So but is, is that a, but is that approved know, for Atlantic finish. salmon flies? It it is good for Atlantic salmon flies, yes. But Says is it, it on approved the by the stamp by the salmon fly board of uh, Board of Governors. Um, sure. 
<laughs> looks like I kind of froze on that other one, but uh, we'll see if there we go. Anyway, what I do is I've got my thread. You can see it. It's right here at about the return. I want to, for this one, I'm going to take wraps rearward and I want to go. So I'm, I'm two thirds of the way down, two thirds of the way between the return and the start of the tag. So I'm going to go right about there. And this, again, I tie it very, very differently than Tom does, but um, I'm going to leave a, a tag. I don't know, about an inch and a half. And I'm going to take two wraps. Maybe three wraps of thread right there. Three? three. And then... Oh. I'm going to start wrapping rearward. I'm not really worried about this first layer covering everything so much. I got a second layer that I'm going to do. And you guys probably noticed, I, I've been trying to keep my hands away from the the floss in close. I've just added split pair plunger style hackle pliers. Here's where I'm going to cover that sixth wrap up so I'm left with five and because I don't want a space between the the gold tag and the green and the green and so that that makes sure that there is make sure that there is a space so I'm going to come back so I'm going to come back get everything covered get up everything with green covered up with green and again i haven't enclosed I, I haven't touched that, this glow that, bright this with my bright hand. hand so i'm not getting any sweat or nasty nasty skin oils on there skin oils on there and again i'm going to tie this I'm gonna tie on the it underside on the underside Bring it about up to there. We're just going to leave it. I'm going to snip it off. Now for the red. Um, Tom, when you get a chance, do you have a question about bobbins? I'm just, I'm just watching. Go ahead. Um, do you find ceramic bobbins work better than steel ones? This is coming from uh, Ralph. Oh. You know, I don't pay. I honestly, Ralph, don't pay much attention to it. I have, I have steel, polished steel ones, and I have ceramic ones. And um, you know, there's disadvantages and advantages to both. The ceramic's a little smoother, but uh, they can crack. The ceramic can crack, and the stainless steel is um, a little bit more expensive. And if they're not made really well and buffed really well, um, they can have a burr in them occasionally and cut the thread. But um, honestly. Um, you know, I, I probably have six or eight bobbins on my fly tying desk and probably half of them are stainless and half of them are ceramic and I don't pay much attention to, to, um, whether they're one or the other and I seldom have problems with them. So, um, yeah, I would, whatever, whatever works for you probably is, is going to be good. I know that's a, I know that's a mealy mouth answer, but. <laughs> <laughs> That's just Tim. Do you have do you have a preference, Tim? I I, I do like the ceramic for for a lot of things, and um, uh, particularly smaller stuff. And then uh, as as I get into larger flies, for whatever reason, I, I switch over to to the steel, and uh, uh -huh. that that seems to work for me. Let me try to focus just a little better here. I do have to finish up my tag here because guys, this, this is, this is one of the differences. I, I, I really think you, you'll notice I have this tag sticking off of the back. I like, cause I've had problems before. I like to bring the tag up over top and lock it down. And the reason for doing that is it will keep those wraps from slipping back again after a lot of casting and and um i've i've had it happen before the the floss wraps go back over top of the tinsel and it's just it's a mess so with um i'm using the uh 
the globe right again, uh, just the red globe right for my second tag. And I'm going to wind this over top of the first green tag. So again, a little difference between me and Tom. Going to get that tied in, bring it, bring it up top and just snug it down. And again, I'm going to just go kind of a slow process, but this way I can, I can gauge, I can go exactly halfway down, which is right about there. But here's, it's another little trick. I'm going to go one turn more. So it's just a little bit longer and you'll see later on <clears throat> what I'm talking about, why, why I did that. So in the end, the red part does look a little bit longer than the green. Just going to snip this off. And I do the same thing with the red i'll bring it over top just so those wraps can't slide slide down and i'll just finish up real quick here tom i bring everything back up to fill in that oh, area you go ahead the just keep just keep going. Don't wait for me, Tim. You just, you okay. just, you, just you know, take up all the time here you want, Tim. No problem. Oh, one Tim, little, uh, there we go. Julia says, do fish, do fish really care or, or it's about an art form and aesthetics and durability. Yes, uh, Julia, it, it is, it is really more about um, the way the fly is tied and an art form than it is um than it is about uh pragmatic matters here especially uh, i remember when i used to fish in nova scotia uh, with some of the local guys um, most of their flies <clears throat> were just um were just black yarn like just yarn you'd buy in the store and and a wing of black bear hair and that was it no hackle no nothing and they caught as many fish as anybody. You know, they'd use uh, black bear or or hair from a Labrador retriever or squirrel hair, and they were so simple, and they worked just as well as any fancy fly. So <clears throat> it's it's all about the fly tire in this case. Don't you think, Tim? I, I agree, and um, I, I don't know whether you've ever been there up in Nova Scotia, the Marguerite Salmon um, Museum up there, Cape Breton. Yeah. And uh, I mean, ago. they have some elaborate flies there for sure, but some of the early fishing flies, it's just amazing. I, I, they're, they're, they're beautiful, but, but super, super crude at the same time. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't say crude. I'd just say simple, right? Yeah, yeah. Crude, I guess, crude compared to a full dress salmon fly. All right. So is it, my, is it finally my turn, Flagler? It is your turn. All right, so I am going to see that I back up enough. I need to back up a little bit more because Flagler's taking up my real estate here. God, that guy is just like he's he's taking half half of the half of the screen. <laughs> All right, so um, I'm just gonna wet this again and then i'm going to come forward trying to keep that stuff you know on top and bottom just so you get a you get a fairly uniform body doesn't really matter when you're putting peacock curl in here it would matter if you were, um, if you had a floss body under here, but peacock, uh, peacock and dub fur 
will hide a lot of ills. So I am going to whip finish here because I'm done with my white thread so that the black doesn't show through. And yeah, then we, I'm going to attach. We, we should kind of stress that, Tom, is that, that you the reason for the white thread underneath is to keep those colors, the green and the red, as bright as possible. And that's what the white thread yeah. does for you. Yeah. And then I'm going to take that big old spool of French tinsel. Yikes. And just cut a short piece. You want any French tinsel, Tim? <laughs> I got a couple pounds I can I can share. <laughs> you got a lot of wooden spools this up there. A, this is going to be a this is going to be a heavier this is a heavier tinsel than what I use for the tip. And I'm just going to tie this in starting on the top and then gradually, this is a tip I learned from a guy named Tim Flagler, gradually go to the far side. So when I start that first turn, it's going to start nicely for me. Should I, should I keep going? Or should, um, should I no, what, what, well, I got a few steps to get to as well. So why don't I go ahead? Okay. I'll be quick this time. I swear. Oh uh, yeah, sure. Is that okay? Sure you will. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> sure you will. I'm going to do pretty much the same thing Tom just did. I'm going to whip finish. Right behind that return. Try to keep things nice and even. Ralph is saying I'm high maintenance today, Tim. Well, I think we're both high I maintenance. I, was high maintenance. High. I thought I was high maintenance all the time. What does Julia say? Me, Julia, or Julia in the comments? Yeah, Ju Julia, what are you, am I high maintenance all? You know, you had a triumph. You didn't have any power until 250. So I think you're doing great, Tom. Until I lose. <laughs> I think you're doing great too, Tom. The home team, the home team may win someday. All right. So I'm gonna I'm using the same tinsel. But <laughs> Here, I'm going to break my own rule. I'm, I'm going to tie in on this side again at the return. And I'm going to work my way underneath. So I can get that. Uh, so the first wrap comes from underneath. And. As Tom was saying, you can see I have a little bit of bulk there. Once once we put on the um, the peacock curl, it just doesn't matter so much on this pattern. That that peacock curl covers up a multitude of sins, if you will. People and so should I, notice. I think we're out of the same any. spot now, Tom. So you're up. And does everybody does everybody notice that I don't have any bulk there? Is, is, are people are people paying attention to this? That I have no bulk there. Flagler has bulk. I don't that know. Should I be see another two points. There. It should be another two points off your score. All right. <laughs> what are you going to do with peacock curl, Tom? Oh, I'm going to tie some in. And I. Um, on this fly, since that oval tinsel is fairly he uh, fairly heavy, and you want this peacock curl to show through, I would be generous with your peacock curl. Normally, I use three or four strands of peacock curl, but um, on this fly, it's a bigger fly too. I might use, you know, um, one, I'll count them for you. One, two, three four, five, six, seven, eight, nine strands. So you must use nine strands of peacock curl. Go big or go home. And I am going to cut them all off at the base. 
Oh, yeah, I got the right camera on. And then one of the things you want to do with peacock curl always before you tie it in is to cut the tips off. They're uneven and um, they're not, they're very fragile and, uh, and there's not as much hurl there. So just, just snip them off square like so. And then I'm going to lay in my peacock curl so that it ends at that return. Make sure that first turn is right up against the floss and then just come forward and bind it down. And you, now at this point you can come a little bit beyond the return because you're going to hit you're going to tie it off a little bit forward there. Should I wind my peacock curl too, Tim? Wind away. Okay, I'm going to wind away. So, I don't I don't do it like Tim. Tim uh Tim puts his thread right here and then and then winds the peacock curl up against the thread. What I do is I take a turn and then I just twist it a little bit. And I twist it. Um, we have a question about um, about presentation and, and how to how to cast these when when you're ready. Okay, let me uh, finish this and then tie it off underneath the hook. And then a good way of uh, trimming that is to flip your flip your hook upside down. Should have that ready. And now you can trim that peacock curl nice and flush without chance of cutting your thread. And I think I'll just keep it there. And then should I wind my ribbing too, Tim? I, I would if I were you. All right, I will. And then we and can answer this the must be Julia. five turns. It has to be. This must be five turns. So you have to kind of gauge it. One, two, three, four, five. Can I ask you a question, Tom? And tie it off again underneath. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Did you wind the, the peacock curl in the same direction as the rib? It's a secret. Okay. <laughs> yes, I did. Yes, I did. I don't back wind. Okay. I don't counter wind. Just a question. That's all. Yep. I don't counter wind. Yeah, I don't like the way it looks and, uh, and I get screwed up. <laughs> i do and it, i don't know it's just like it's just like I, you know i do my dubbing the wrong way too i spin my what do i spin my dubbing uh what did you say i spin it uh clockwise and i should be spinning it counterclockwise uh, other way around it should be clockwise as if you're looking oh down. i do i do spin my dubbing clockwise okay well that's good so i have been doing it right that's oh. a yeah, I spin my dubbing. I spin my dubbing clockwise. Clockwise as you're looking down, right? Yes. Oh, okay. Then I'm doing it right. Good. Last time, last time you told me I was doing it wrong, but I think you thought I was doing it counterclockwise. Anyway, go ahead. Mind your body, Tim. <laughs> well, Julie had a question. I think for for you, Tom. Oh, when using is it from? Is it Tyler's question, Julia? Uh, yeah, exactly. Um. Uh, typically, these flies are meant to be swung. Um, you can you can dead drift um, a salmon fly. Uh, that that's a technique that that uh, is used infrequently, particularly for really um, moody fish or fish that aren't taking well. Um, but generally, you want to swing it in front of the fish, uh, just as you would for a steelhead. And and I would not fish this fly under an indicator. I'm sorry. 
that is something that Ugh. that I would never do. <laughs> it, it doesn't have. It's not the right kind. It's meant to be swung. You know, it has it has hackle and and it has a wing, a hair wing. It's meant to be swung. I don't think it would be very effective dead drift. Yeah, I think it. You know, like anything on a J hook, it would it pretty if it was dead drifted, it would hang vertically and um, kind of defeat the whole purpose. As as long as it's being swung, that wing's going to ride up and. And show the the salmon kind of the whole profile of the fly, which is the idea. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, first of all, guys, I want to apologize. I I know I look like a meerkat going like this, but I, what I'm trying to do is look around the camera to see what Tom's doing. So that's why my head's moving all over the place. Um, oh, you, I, you don't need to watch what I'm doing. Don't worry about it. Just go ahead and tie your fly. I, I don't have some kind of medical issue. Um. I'm going to go back. Uh, where are we? There we are. There we are. Roger, you could definitely swing these for white bass. I don't know if it would work, but you could. You could try it. So rather yeah, than grabbing a whole fistful of hackle or a curl, I'm just going to take one, two, three, three, Four hurls. Four hurls. And the, these are just strung, strung peacock curls, um, peacock curls. Um, not not from the, the eye. But I do snip the brittle tips off as well, kind of get down into the into the meat of the, the hurl. And I'm going to tie mine in right here, um, give my bump a little counterclockwise you've got spin. A, you've, got a, you've got a bump in the body. You're using four hurls. Four hurls. Four hurls. And I'm People, gonna how can this guy, how can this guy possibly win this competition? Can you turn look it at up, that John? bump. Look at that. Look at that ugly bump. And if you look real close, you can see some white thread in there, which is really bad. Really bad. But oh, we're going to take it. You, you see it? It's going to get covered up by the peacock curl. Yeah. But remember on. this. I want everybody to I want everybody to remember that white spot. You see that? Okay. When it comes to when it comes to judging, I want everybody to remember that. Here's the cool part though, Tom. Remember I left that red segment just a little bit longer than the green one? And the reason for doing that, I am gonna counter wrap my hurl. I'm gonna do it right behind my tying thread. But that first strap of hurl covers up a little bit of the red and so it evens evens out the red and the green and the green so they look like they're the same length and again i'm wrapping behind my tying thread just to keep those hurls sandwiched together and as soon as i get up on the return i'm i'm really uh, I'm going to stop right there, I think. You need to go over top a few times. And I'm not going to worry about top and bottom where to snip off with these because uh, it's going to get covered up in just a minute. And then that way, when I take the wraps with the the five wraps, one, that one's not, that one's fighting me, two, two, three, four, five? <laughs> <laughs> five and a half. Uh, I, I'm going to get counted off for that one. I can feel it coming. <laughs> but anyway, I've got, um, I have got the peacock curl counter wrap just for protection with those five wraps of gold tinsel. Uh, you can fluff it up a little bit. And then the other thing that I did is, is that it kind of by covering uh, the, the peacock curl covers up any white thread that's there and sort of evens the look between the red and the green. Um, that's why I left that 
read just a little long. Uh-oh. That was close. I better zoom out before I get in trouble. All right, buddy, you're up. Okay. So um, I, Tim is probably going to put a collared hackle on this plush, which yes, is not he the is. way it's supposed to be tied. But um, I'm going to do it the traditional way. If you were tying a casa boom, yes, you'd tie a collared hackle. This fly is a beard hackle. But you go ahead and do whatever you want, Tim. I'll oh, let you oh deal with my. the Atlantic Salmon Police. So um, I am lucky enough to have a really nice um, black hen saddle patch. And, boy, you know, people, people don't pay enough attention to um, good hen hackle. Um, you know, they just get a hen hackle or they get some hen hackle in a bag or something. And um, good hen hackle makes a huge difference in how your flies look for any kind of fly. So I'm going to pick a nice, fairly large one there, I think. And I'm going to take it over and measure it to make sure that it's right. I might actually I might use a little bit shorter one. No, that's too short. I'll try this one. Yeah, I'll try this one. And then um, before I tie my hackle in, I like to just eyeball it and see if it's going to come where I want it to. I don't want it to quite reach the point of the hook, and that looks about right. So I'm going to prepare this hen hackle by get that out of the way by holding it at the tip and first i'm going to get rid of this fuzz just makes it e easier to deal with deal with the hackle and i'm just going to grab it by the very tip and stroke it down gently try not to break those fibers or get them out of the way and then if i can find my scissors I'm going to cut the tip short, shorter, and then I am going to come in right along the stem and remove the fibers along the stem. What it gives me is, are these little bristles that stick out, which um, really helps uh, hold, hold the hackle in so that when you start to wind it, it doesn't pull out. So now I'm going to tie this in right on top, shiny side up, or, you know, hen hackle isn't very shiny, but uh, convex side up, concave side down. And I'm going to take some very wraps over that hackle. And do I need to trim that? Yeah, I'll trim it. Can't even find it. I guess I don't need to trim it. One thing you have to make sure that it's locked to the hook and, and the hackle doesn't just go down that center groove because um, if you if your hackle goes down that center groove, um, it cannot lock in place. So before you wind it, it's a good idea to just give it a little tweak to make sure it's not going to go anywhere. Should I wind my hackle too, Tim? Yeah, go ahead. All right. Okay, so I'm going to go forward just a bit. Maybe about halfway to the eye. And I'm going to hold this hackle up, and I'm going to uh, wet my fingers and stroke the hackle back. It's called folding the hackle. So that it all comes from one side of the stem. And then I guess I'll use hackle pliers. You don't always need them with these bigger feathers, but I'll use hackle pliers. And what I'm going to do is try to make sure it's kind of hard doing this photography to get in here. I'm going to make sure that it folds back on every turn. You may have to twist that, that stem a little bit. 
and just gradually work forward one turn in front of the other. And keep stroking it back as you wind it. And that looks about right. Right about there. You don't want too much hackle on this thing. And then tie it in carefully. And then snip the end. And then what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to separate, I'm going to provide, make a little bed for my hair wing on top. So I'm going to separate those fibers and pull them down just a bit so that I leave a little bed in the middle of the shank for my wing. And there's just a little bit of a gap in there. So my wing will, will set nicely in there. So oh, here, really, I'll turn and show it to you. See, there's just a little bit of a little bit of a bed there to help keep that um, that wing in place. So really, not a beard, kind of a modified no, collar. Not a beard. It's um, you know, it's kind of the it's kind of the traditional. It's a traditional beard. You know, it's typically the way um, Atlantic salmon wet flies were tied. Looks not, good. not a beard, but not a full collar. Yeah, I kind of do the exact same, Tom. Honestly, it's, oh, um, you do? oh, I thought you, I thought you were going to put a collar on this. On your well, it, it's yeah, it's halfway between, I guess. Oh, um, okay. Should I get started? Yeah, go ahead. I'm going to back up a little bit. Okay. Um, uh, uh oh, I lost the camera here, guys. I'm going to switch. Lost two cameras. Let me switch back to me and um, get some more batteries here. Sorry for the delay. Do you get points off for having to switch batteries too? Yeah, I think? know. That's bad. What do you think, guys? <laughs> yeah, Tyler, Tim, Tim with five and a half wraps. Definitely, I want you to remember that when you vote. <laughs> Tough day. Oh my gosh, out of focus, everything here. All right, getting there, guys. Sorry, get back into focus. Fresh battery. All right. Yes, ma'am. Anyway, T Tom was exactly right. Finding finding decent hen hackle um, for for soft hackles for salmon flies is it's really nice to have one that works well. This one's been working real well for me. It's identified as salmon uh, hen hackle. Um, I I do kind of. Um, do a, a different little tie in anchor than Tom does. It's going to be hard to see, I guess, but um, pretty uh, pretty much the same thing. I have it stripped down low and pull the fibers back to expose the tip. But I go like this, pull them back. Gosh, that's hard to see. Um, uh, it, sh it, sh it shows okay. Okay. It shows, yeah, it shows okay. But I'm going to snip that entire tip off. Oh. <gasps> So I'm left with that. Oh, no. And <laughs> what that does is I know this is going to be a little weird. I'm going to give my bobbin a counterclockwise spin again so the thread jumps rearward. But I'm going to go like this and go over. I, I do. I don't want it going down that, that channel between the return and the, the shank. And that just gives me a little extra structure on on that that brittle stem um that type of tie-in for me um i am going to use plunger style hackle pliers get hold of it and again you, you do have to be gentle to fold it back i like to bend the feather down through my fingers 
like that. And that generally gets that hackle folded rearward. and bring it up like that. Same thing as Tom, I just parted on the side. And I know what you yeah. guys are think We're thinking. Tired. I've got we really tied it exactly the same. Yeah. I am also gonna make conscious effort to get my thread located as far back as I can to that collar. And yes, I do have a lot of, lot of um, hook eye, uh, space here exposed. That's, I, I like having some room behind the eye because of the knot that I tie when I'm, when I'm fishing these things. Uh, it's time for the wing. It's time for the wing. This, <laughs> This is the scary part. Yeah, yeah, it is. So um, the the original pattern um, called for black bear hair, and I really like black bear hair. It um, it has nice mobility in the water, and the nice thing about black bear hair, unlike bucktail, is that it um, tapers down. It tapers down um, pretty quickly, so that your tie-in point is relatively small and thin, um, but you still have a good profile of a wing. So um, you don't want to overdo the wing on this fly. You don't want too big of a wing. I think that's probably enough or even more than enough for the wing. So I'm going to uh, cut that. And black bear hair is still available. It's not a protected species like polar bear hair. You can buy black bear hair. And um, you're going to want to remove all this uh, under fur from the black bear hair and see how it gets really thin down in there. And this, this makes wonderful dubbing for big stone flies and stuff. It's, so you want to save that under fur from the black bear. And then I go to the other end. And you, you don't want to stack this wing. Um, if there are any fibers that are too long, that are longer than the rest of them, you just want to pull them out. But you want a nice natural taper to this wing. You don't want to stack it like you would a dry fly wing or something. You want it to be, um, you want it to be nice and tapered. So don't put it in the stacker. Clean it out good. And then you're going to measure it. And I like my wing to go not quite to the bend. I like a fairly short wing on this, just the way, you know, it's kind of traditional Atlantic salmon style. So I'm going to measure it there. And then I'm just going to give myself a little bit of extra. And I'm going to try to cut it off nice and square. And this is the hard part. I hope I can get in here and do this. So I'm going to give my bob in a counterclockwise spin and lay it in there and come back about to the middle of the hair and give it a good, yeah. Uh, There, give it a good, really good firm pull. And then wind forward, then wind back. And the traditional um, Atlantic salmon fly head should be very blunt, short and blunt. And fairly and fairly heavy. Oh, my hook got pulled down a little bit there. 
put too much pressure on it. And so I'm just going to even out that, even out that head. Might as well whip finish it, right, Tim? Yeah, absolutely. And just make sure, you know, before you finally set it, make sure that that wing is, you know what? I'm going to do that wing again because I didn't catch it all. Oh, boy. Go ahead and tie your wing. I'm going to do mine again. <laughs> oh, that's the hazards of the wings on these things. Yeah, I'm going to have it a do over here. And I'll do it yeah, while it you're. Can. I'll do it while you're uh, doing your wing. All right, it it can happen to anybody. That one. Um, I'm a little different. I I do like black bear, but like the the black bear I have right now is it's um, it's too long, and and um, it it just wasn't tapering right for me. So I, um, I have this. This is black squirrel tail. Uh, real good um, quality. It's been dyed. It, it's not natural black, but um, down here by the base, the hair's a little bit shorter than it is up further, um, real long out at the tips. The problem with squirrel is it's very, very slippery. So that problem that Tom just had, um, it can be even worse with squirrel. Um, the other thing with squirrel that's a little different is, I'm going to snip some of this out. The... Uh, uh, I, I, I like a tapered wing as well, but um, it, this has got a lot of uneven, really uneven hairs. And I'm going to pull a lot of this out, really decreases the amount of hair that I have there. And so uh, even with that, it's it's pretty uneven up by the tips. And I, I will give it a little stacking. It, it stacks remarkably well, uh, which kind of makes sense because it's so slippery um stacks like a champ the other the other um the other hair that is nearly perfect for this fly is um labrador retriever hair <laughs> well i know a lot of people tie with tie it with I moose hair too. the other day and um, both the collar and the rump i have two black labs actually and uh, both the collar and the rump look pretty darn good Oh, okay. Oops. Back to this one. Oh. Um, yeah, I guess I better, huh? There we go. All right, you got yours tied in, Tom? Yeah, I don't know if I was allowed that do-over, but... Well, I, I could have one, too, so... So we each get one do-over. All right. Yeah. All right, so my, my tie-in is pretty much the same as Tom's, uh, to be honest. I, I, I snip it a little little differently, though. Um, same thing. I, I like to go right to the bend of the hook with the wing and keep it up at an angle like this and then re-grip. And I really like that angle. But what I'm going to do is reach in with my tying scissors, put them at an angle, and snip. So I have a, it's 90 degrees to the hair. But my key is, is keeping your thread way back here, really driving those butt ends all the way down to the shank, and then wrapping at 90 degrees to the hair. And generally what that does is gives you a fairly smooth ramp down to the hook shank. Got a little bit of extra hair in there that I don't want. I'm going to whip finish be, since we're going into overtime here. Okay, I'll do the same. And you want to whip finish back toward the head. You don't, you want, because again, you want that blunt, you want that blunt, quickly tapered head. So if you're going to put any bulk in that head, you want to put it back back there 
And then uh, I don't like epoxy for these flies because um, epoxy just puts a coating on the top of the thread, whereas head cement, because it takes longer to dry, seeps into the wines and seeps into the bases of those hairs. In fact, um, many, many years ago, um, when I tied, when I was a teenager and I tied Atlantic salmon flies commercially, uh, we used spar varnish for our Atlantic salmon fly heads on hair wings because um, spar varnish is, is really flexible. It dries hard, but it's really flexible and it really soaks in to the, um, to the hairs and it would make a super, super durable head on a salmon fly. Yeah, and I, I as, as many people know, um, I, I have a problem, a sensitivity to UV cure resin. So I um, normally I would use the, the thin UV cure resin, which does penetrate a little bit, um, but um, I, I just can't use it anymore. I, I react. Um, and so I am probably going to go with, with um, something like Sally Hansen, hard as nails. But I, I'm sure some of you are probably wondering why that big space behind the eye. It's because of the knot that I like to use. And uh, I'll show you what I mean. I need to get this all the way out front. Um, this and is just... Probably, if you're using head cement, it's probably a good idea to give it two coats. So you give it a coat, let it dry. I mean, this is a salmon fly. You want to you wanna take your time with it. Um, it's probably a good idea to give it two coats. I'm using the uh, high gloss in this case, and I get it one coat, and then I'll give it another coat in five minutes or so. Um, the other thing that, that people used to do with uh, salmon flies is they would put, would put black lacquer uh, on the head of the fly, which would give it a real glossy black look. But um, you can also, um, and I don't think they sell it anymore. It was called Selire, Selire or Selire Vineyard sold it. But um, Sally Hansen's actually makes a black uh, nail polish. Yeah, I, I have some of it right somewhere that's, um, gosh, where'd that go? Oh, really uh, nice stuff too, guys. It's, um, it's instant, insta-dry. Um, you just have to be kind of careful with it. You don't want it riding up too far on the on the the hair wing and everything else. Um, but actually, but yeah. you know, I like to, you know, if you if you do if you put if you put lacquer on the head or Sally Anson's, um, it almost looks artificial. And I like to, I like to just just kind of see the turns of thread under there. You know, just barely see the turns of thread. I, I mean, again, it's a, it's a total stylistic thing. Tim, you do have questions about what knot you tie? Um, the, the knot is the, that I have on there, and it's the reason for leaving that long space. Usually my space isn't quite that long. I'd like it about half that long. So the, the knot, you know, the, my head would come up to about here. But it, what it is is it's just a uni knot um loop and then i i feed the you know the running line down through and to me it just it, it helps the fly track correctly um the other thing that that space does is allows you to tie a riffling hitch um we, we don't need to get into the whole thing with riffling hitch but it it um it allows the try fly to track kind of sideways and 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 swim better has a little bit of uh, motion going across when you swing um, so yeah, that would be my complaint with, we got it. We got to do the reveal. Oh, we golly. Do the rotate. I think you got this one, Tom. Turn yours so they can see the color. Got a bent hackle fiber.
It is a beautiful fly, isn't it, Tim? It, it really is. And, and, you know, works and, and again, no, no jungle cock. And it, it I think it, the jungle cock takes away from, from this particular one, but. I don't know about that. <laughs> I was going to put jungle cock on mine, but. Really? Oh, yeah, I, I was thinking and, and, uh. One more, it's one more thing to screw up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, in our, not that I actually have any jungle cock, but are we allowed to even show it if we did say have some? Yes, because it is it is grown domestically. It can be grown domestically and it can be it can be legally purchased if it's grown domestically and not not imported. It's an import law, I believe. <laughs> okay. So I may or may not have some. I have some, but mine is Pre nineteen seventy two, I think. So it's wow. It's uh, it was you know legally purchased a long time ago. All right, and then put the pole up. Put the pole up. I'm not even. I'm gonna turn. I'm gonna turn turn off now. I'm not even gonna. I'm not even gonna. Where's my camera? Come on, come on. There. Uh, oops. I all right, we'll let this go for uh, a couple minutes, and then I'll cut it off at uh, at four twenty our time. Okay. Wow, that was a long one, Tom. I know, Tim. It's not that hard of a fly either. No, no, it really isn't. I have another practice one here. I, I. Because I know that I don't like the how long that space is. I like them just a little bit smaller. Something more like like that. Uh huh. Yep. And I just I I overachieved on the space. Sorry, you got. I think it's gonna bit. cost me, bud. Sorry. Yeah. You got you got to live with it. I don't know, Tim. I th you you always win anyway, so. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Larry Larry wants to know about jungle cock. Um, Larry, jungle cock is a is a feather from a uh, jungle fowl that is um, is protected, and it used to be used um, for eyes on on salmon flies and on streamer flies, and it's a beautiful beautiful feather. It looks like a minnow eye. And, um, and it's very hard to get and it's very expensive, but, um, there are some that are raised domestically and you can buy them. Um, if you look, if you look online or go to a sport show, if we ever go to sport shows again, um, uh, but it, it uh, I would look it up. I would just look it up, look it up, Google jungle cock and you'll see what it looks like, but it's a beautiful, beautiful feather and it's pretty cool. Um, there are also uh, some, some uh, synthetic printed ones now that they used to be horrible, but there are, there are a few of them that are coming out that look pretty darn good. They're, yeah, yeah, uh, they're, they're photographic replicas, and yeah, they're they're pretty darn good. Yeah, yeah, and certainly more durable. They don't split the way the natural stuff does. But um, um, Tyler had a question about using a feather wing or over the top of the black fur. Yeah, Tyler, you could you could embellish this fly. Um, however you want, it wouldn't be an undertaker, but it would be a, it would be a, a Tyler's, uh, Tyler's undertaker, <laughs> but you, yeah, you could, you could certainly do that. Certainly modify the pattern. All right, gentlemen, are you ready? Uh, Five seconds. I know. I, I know, know what it's going to be. I've been reading the comments. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to. Yeah. Since your power going out brought you some luck, you won 89% to 11%. Whoa! I finally won. Wow. You crushed me. Crushed me, Tom. <laughs> you, crushed, you crushed me on one of them before, too. <laughs> Even with my do-over, huh? Even with my wings. Yeah. I, I think it was too long of an eye for me. 
Um, that's an aesthetic thing. So um, I think, well, think that and I, have tied, and I have tied a lot of salmon flies over the years. Um, congratulations. Yes, congratulations, Tom. Well, thank you, Tim. Thank you well very won. much. It, as usual, it was it was so much fun tying with you, and uh, good to get together with you virtually. And yes, in sir. four weeks, in four weeks, I get to pick the pattern. Yes, you do. And we can maybe talk about it. Which it should be a hard one, though. I'm gonna think of a hard one, a hard but short one, right? <laughs> so we don't go yeah. over. But, you know, difficult ones with, I mean, you, you and I both have the camera in front of us. And so reaching around these things is, is no, no picnic, you know? Yeah. Well, that's, that's why it's fun doing it live because you never know what's going to happen. And one of us could really yeah. screw up. <laughs> yeah. All right, everyone. Well, thank you. Thank you for, uh, for tuning into uh, the Tom versus Tim, uh, Tim versus Tom tie off number five. This is the fifth one we've done. And um, I hope everyone is um, staying safe and safe and healthy out there and take care of yourself and be careful. And, but get outside. Um, there's still some fishing to be had, some hunting, some mushroom hunting, some foraging some hiking, lots of stuff to do outside. So get out there and get some fresh air and uh, enjoy nature. Oh, there's a recommendation for a tarpon toad, Tom. Tarpon toad. Ah, hmm. I don't know. Saltwater flies, they don't get as much. They don't get as much. Uh, of course, we did a salmon fly, which is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And somebody yeah. just suggested a Jock Scott full dress. Not going to happen, Keith. No, not going to happen unless unless people want to watch this thing for about four hours. <laughs> I haven't tied a Jock Scott full dress in many years. Ne I never tied one. Those things never scare did. me. To death. Yeah, I have. I have. Um, but I, I don't know if I ever will again. You know what would be fun is a gummy minnow. They are so hard. Oh, no way. No. They're really hard. I, 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 chocolate fly, right? Huh? That's plain, plain chocolate. chocolate. Fly. Yeah, I've yeah. decided. I've decided that um, that I'm going to master the gummy minnow this winter. Oh, uh, I, I stick myself to them. That that's miserable. Uh, Monahan says glow bug. I'm pretty good with a glow bug. Yeah. Can you get? Can you get them really round? Yeah, pretty round. Yeah. Oh, I, I have to watch your technique. Yeah, I got got a couple weird ones, but a crayfish pattern would be good. I but I don't have a favorite one. I have to. Um, I know I know that Ed had asked for crayfish before, but I, I I haven't found a specific crayfish fly that I'm really happy with. Have you? Yeah. You have a no, not not really. I I have a couple different ones, but. Um, most of them don't really look like I have a couple that look like crayfish, but the other ones are more suggestive of crayfish. Yeah. And so, yeah. you know, they don't really have two claws and cause I don't see the need for that. But no. um, anyway, Oh, a muddler minnow. That would be a disaster though. For oh, me. a classic muddler. Yeah. <laughs> it's your choice, man. I'm at your mercy, oh. Tom. I don't know. I already did. I already did a conehead marabou muddler. So I don't know. Classic muddler. Classic muddler would be. Yeah. We'll think about it. Clink All camera. Right. Yeah. Oh. Camera. Good idea. I like a clink hammer. We're not going to be tying an Irish lock fly. Sorry, Graham. <laughs> <laughs> We're done. We're done with winged wet flies, right, Tim? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I, I wish we hadn't started talking about suggestions because some of these are just terrifying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, oh, great go. Yeah, like we were get off of here before it gets worse, Tom. <laughs> okay. Well, thanks, everybody, for tuning in today. Um, we're, we're glad you came, and it means a lot. Your comments are fun, and it means a lot that you're, you're here to watch us. So um, thank you for tuning in. And um, I'll see you next Monday, and Tim and I will see you in a month.
All right. Congratulations. Stuff. And Thank to everybody you. who voted for him, thanks for nothing. Yeah. <laughs>